Hola. I hope everybody is well today. I hope everybody's coming on board. Hi guys on Instagram. Hi guys on Facebook. Hi guys over there on YouTube. Wow, quite a few of you. Uh, all right, so terrific. Thank you for coming on board today. I, um, I know people come in late. People are just discovering this and clicking through and so I kind of always stall in the beginning. My name is Eric Rhodes and I'm the publisher of Fine Art Connoisseur, Plein Air Magazine. And the newsletters, Fine Art Today, Plein Air Today, Realism Today, and American Watercolor, uh, they're published weekly and uh, got a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of people reading those things. So thank you guys. If, if you're not subscribers to those, uh, if you want to know all the stuff we do, um, we have a button, I think on most of our websites that just says everything we do. Because we're getting so many new people all the time and they're telling us that uh, we didn't know what you do, we didn't know you did videos, we didn't know you did trips, we didn't know you did artist retreats or, or conferences or books or, vid you know, everything, magazines. And so we have a web, uh, a page called Everything We Do, which you should find it on Streamline Art Video or Little It All Art Video or OutdoorPainter.com. Uh, the wind is blowing here and blew my, my big notepad, so... It, it could be a disastrous day. The wind is really, really fierce. As a matter of fact, yesterday, I'm sitting in my office, and uh, uh, my phone rings, and I typically ignore it, you know, because I was in, in a video call, and uh, I picked it up for some reason. My son said, Dad, get in the boat. Get out here quick. And so I got in the boat, and uh, the, the boys were out sailing, and they had gotten the sailboats had turned over and the mast had fallen off and went into the, uh, sunk and uh and the boats are drifting and they can't it was just so windy they couldn't possibly sail so uh you know we uh, my wife and i each took took out went out there and and, and uh rescued these kids and they they were safe but they were they were exhausted as you can imagine and cold because the wind was blowing so it was a, a bit of an adventure and then i came back to my call so uh, anyway, uh, I'm standing here in uh, the porch in the Adirondacks. I'm trying to do this for you daily. Uh, we come up here and try to spend some of our summer here. And so uh, today is day number 91. Uh, not 91 days in the Adirondacks, but 91 days of doing a continuous broadcast every day for at 12 noon for you guys. And the goal is, quite simply, uh, give you guys something to think about, get your head out of the whole COVID thing, out of, out of the protest thing, everything else that's going on in the world, and just kind of focus on your passion for art or your interest in art for those of you who are new, and also to kind of try to get you into a, a, you know, a different spirit because it's real easy to get down. I got down last night. Uh, my, uh, my wife called my brother-in-law. They're getting ready to come visit us and uh, found out that he's been laying in bed for 12 days with COVID and uh, had some, some pretty, pretty severe stuff going on. And so it was pretty frightening. And so just a reinforcement that we all need to be responsible, wear our masks. Uh, this morning I went out, I had, had to meet some guys uh, across the lake to do some work uh, at, over at my dad's. And so I put my mask on. I, you know, I want to just make sure that not everybody's doing it, but I'm going to at least do it for me. And I read a study last night that said that it really is making a difference for, for areas that are wearing them. So I don't know. I wasn't sure about that before, but I'm, I'm, my brother-in-law said, look, I kept my social distance. I stayed away from everything. I didn't touch anything, and I still got it. He said, but I wasn't wearing a mask. So maybe, maybe there's a lesson in that. So today I'm going to talk about how to get more money ethically, that's very important in all cases, ethically out of every painting, every sale that you make. Uh, and this could apply to, quite frankly, to any business. Uh, and it's something I never really understood for a lot of years. But once I did it, I found out that there's some real value in it. So we're going to talk about that. Now yesterday was day 90, so we did this big celebration. And the celebration is I gave away 10 prizes to make it easy, I gave 10 digital subscriptions to Plein Air Magazine. Plein Air Magazine is the number one selling art magazine in America at Barnes & Noble. Outsells every art magazine and outsells every photography magazine. And that is pretty cool. We're pretty proud of that. And we think that, the, quite frankly, the only reason that happens, I mean, we, yes, we think it's a beautiful magazine and the quality is nice, but it's because we zig when everybody else is zagging. 
What I mean by that is that, that that's a marketing principle. If, you're, if you do what everybody else does, you're not going to stand out. So we don't put any text on our photos on the cover of the magazine. And, you know, we'll put text above it, but we don't, you know, you, don't, you go to look at a People magazine or something, there's 12 what they call call-outs, and, uh, you know, squeezed in there. We want to show beautiful paintings and honor the artists who do those beautiful paintings. And so we want our cover, our white cover, to be kind of like a frame. And just, and, and I think that's probably why it sells so well in the newsstand. That's just a guess. I don't really know that, but I know that Barnes & Noble loves us. And uh, we're glad that they are uh, up and running in some places again, because uh, that's got to have been hard for them. So we have, I'm going to run through the names pretty quickly. Uh, winners, uh, Carol Olson, Black Bell, uh, Leslie Nance Vance, Tennessee, Linda Huff, Huff, Huffer, Huff something in Colorado, Despina Pabaluk in Montreal. Man, I'm butchering it. I'm sorry, guys. Gabriel Stockton in California. Deb Baker in Washington. Sherry Akers in Kansas. And Kathy Teasdale in Ottawa. All right. I, you know, I, I, no, no men on that list. I guess that's okay. I mean, it doesn't matter to me. Christina's doing a great job picking them. Uh, today at 3 p.m., every day we're giving you uh, on, not on my personal channel here, but on YouTube at Streamline Art Video, and also on Facebook at Streamline Art Video. We have a free video sample for you. We've done something every day for 90, today's date on 91. And we started out by producing them. It takes our team about eight hours to produce these each, Inclu not including the original shoot. You know, we spend a week typically shooting a video and then a month editing that video and it's a big big deal some of these videos are you know three four hours uh, even that's a lot some of them are you know five six ten twelve eighteen twenty hours uh, we want to get whatever we can get the artist to teach that is their full thing and uh, so uh, today at 3 p.m bill davidson Glowing Landscapes, and Bill is a lot of fun. And uh, also at 9 p.m., uh, the great Japanese watercolor artist, Kiko Tanabe. She travels the world teaching watercolor. She's a big star. Today, she's gonna teach painting sunlight with watercolor. So you, you and even if you're not a watercolorist, check it out. You know, I, I uh, actually have not done this yet. I've been threatening to go to the store, pick up some watercolors, uh, because I don't have any here. I have plenty at home. And uh, because I find that if, you know, I, it'd be nice to be able to just be painting at the kitchen table or something and rather than going up and setting up my easel. I did that last night. I, I uh, was out, the sun was, was down, the sky was still glowing pink. I ran and I got my easel and I set it up right outside here. And there's a, a pretty old, what's called a guide boat. It's like a canoe. And uh, I thought, I'll paint that with the water and, the, and the, everything in the background. And boy, it got dark fast and the bugs were attacking me and I wasn't really properly prepared. I didn't have a hat on, so the bugs were getting me. And uh, so I, I whipped that painting out in about 15 minutes. And by, by the time that 15 minutes was up, it was dark and I, could, I just couldn't see anything anymore. And I didn't have a light and I didn't want to have a light because I didn't want bugs. Anyway, but I did get a painting done. I looked at it uh, in the light, eh, but at least I was painting. So that's why I'd like to have some watercolors around here. So if you're if you're an oil painter, you know, check out a watercolorist and see what you can learn from them. Everybody's got something they can teach you. And the magic of this time is that you are learning things that you never expected to learn because you were looking at things that you never thought that you would like. Now. Uh, one thing I've learned about art and, and, uh, and artists is that there are oftentimes regional favorites. Like, uh, let me give you a really great example of that. Max Ginsburg uh, is really, really big in New York, and he really is well known in the East. When we first did our video with him, we found out he did sold really, really well in those regions. Uh, but in the other regions, they didn't know who he, who he was as much. But what happened is because of all the marketing and all the video over time, Max called me one day and he said, Eric, you made me famous. 
uh, because all of a sudden he's getting invitations from around the world to do uh, demos and things like that. So that was pretty cool. So uh, there are people that you may or may not know. We pick them based on their, hopefully their teaching ability, hopefully the quality of their art. And so just because you don't know them doesn't mean you shouldn't watch them. And, and there's a lot of great stuff on there. So make sure you do that. Okay, so um, a couple of announcements. First off, yesterday was the end, uh, last night was the end of the incentive period. Uh, so if you signed up for Plein Air Live, you, uh, if you got into the Premier or the VIP category, you also got a Plein Air Live t-shirt. Uh, a lot of people signed up last night. Uh, we are now continuing. This is something that you, you, you really want to come to. It's going to be a great event. We're getting a lot of questions, a lot of calls. Uh, one of the biggest questions is, is it live? I mean, do I have to go there in person? No, this is a virtual conference. You watch this just like you're watching now, except we're not using regular webinar software. It's much more extensive than that. And so you'll be able to have a really great experience. You don't need any tech expertise. It's literally, we're gonna send you your link and you're gonna click on it and watch it uh, when, when that time comes. And so it's pretty cool. And we have uh, an incredible lineup. I don't have the list in front of me, so I'm not gonna mention a lot of names, but go to plenairlive.com and look to see who the names are because it's pretty incredible. The um, uh, but I will tell you that, that uh, we just added Joe Paquette. Joe Paquette, everybody wants to see Joe Paquette. Scott Christensen, Kevin McPherson, Catherine Stats, uh, Jill Carver, uh, Susie Baker. Uh, you know, it's just, it's blossoming and turning into quite an event. The other thing is that we are trying to bring the world into this. The goal is this to be the first time in the, in the history of plein air painting, and there's a huge plein air movement, uh, the goal is to have the world, there's a, no, a boat noise, I'm sorry about that. The goal is to have the world together on this broadcast. We're actually going to paint together. We've got a way to do that that's pretty cool that we think has ne never been done. Uh, secondly, uh, we're going to learn together. We're going to interact with each other. You can make comments. You can ask questions. We're going to have uh, the artists on live with us, and so you, we, you can interact, and it's going to be pretty cool. So uh, you want to get that. That's coming up for July 15th through 18th. And we also have a pre-event, uh, pre uh, which you can also purchase separately, which is designed for beginners. We get tons and tons and tons of beginners who have learned about plein air painting from something like this or from the plein air podcast or from happened to running into the magazine and the newsstand. And as a result, uh, we want to help you save a couple of years because a lot of people are like, what is this plein air thing? Why is it different? Should I paint? What, what kind of easels do I use? How do I do it differently? You know, what, even painters who've been studio painters. I was a studio painter. I uh, spent two years trying to learn how to plein air paint uh, before I really got my systems down. This one day probably eliminates that two-year period of time for most people because, you know, we have experience. People are going to tell you all the mistakes you're going to make. And it's not all about painting. It's about gear. You know, when I first started going out, I was hauling all this equipment, studio easel, regular stretched canvases out to the to paint. And it was a nightmare. And so I didn't learn how this was done until I was around a lot of other people and observed and experimented. So we're going to give you the whole enchilada. We're going to do some easel reviews and, and have an opportunity to see a lot of different kinds of easels. It's going to be pretty cool. That's on the beginner's day. And we also are going to have uh, international artists who are going to be teaching people that you might not have encountered. We've got Leon Holmes is coming from Australia. We've got Haiti Joe Summer from England. Uh, let's see, who else do we have? We have Anto Antonin Passenard from France. These are really, really accomplished painters, and you usually don't get a chance to see them, so you're going to get a chance to see them live. We also are having some of our top artists come in and do what we call um, foundational segments because we all need reminders of foundations that we might be missing. So we've got uh, 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 we've got foundations of, of I, I won't get into them because I can't remember them all and I'll just screw it up anyway so excuse, excuse, well, excuse me on that 
Um, anyway, so that's Plein Air Live, and you want to check out pleinairlive.com. Also, the month of June will be ending soon. And with the end of every month is um, the Plein Air Convention and the Figurative Art Convention have payment plans that go up at the end of every month. So you capture, you know, the most lowest payments are this month, and then next month it'll get a little bit more expensive. So you can book for those. Remember, we have a guarantee. I know people are freaking out because they wonder, is the convention going to happen or not? We think it's going to happen. We don't know for sure, but we will give you your money back if it does uh, not happen, or we postpone it or delay it or something else. Uh, you'll get your money back, or you'll be able to apply it if you want to apply it. So anyway, uh, go ahead and sign up for Plein Air Convention and for Figurative Art Convention and Expo and get that done. Plein Air Convention, first time ever in Santa Fe, summertime. And we, uh, summertime, we've ne we always do these in the spring, so it's like spring training, but this is our first time in the summer. And so uh, uh, make sure you go to Plein Air Convention or Figurative Art Convention and, and sign up. Also, Plein Air Salon, the art competition that gives you the cover of Plein Air Magazine and a $15,000 grand prize plus over twenty, twenty-two, twenty-three thousand dollars in additional total prizes, I think, and uh, and there's monthly winners, and then there's national winners that are selected from the category winners of the month, and so we're going to be awarding that on stage at the Plein Air Convention uh, when we hold the convention in Santa Fe. We also have our artist and selfie competition. This is brand new. Enter uh, your paintings of your uh, selfie, your self-portrait your paintings of other artists, your paintings of art studios, and your paintings of other artists painting in plein air. There's about $44,000 in prize uh, money and prizes available for that, and you've got to enter by August 31st. For 31st, I can't even talk, so excuse me. And then last but not least, uh, we have the StreamlineGiveaway.com where we're giving away on July 1st, uh, you've got to enter before the end of the month. Uh, you can enter to win a ticket to the Plein Air Convention or the Figurative Art Convention and Expo. So that's uh, coming up. So that was a mouthful. I apologize for all those announcements, but got to get it done. All right. So how do you get more money out of every sale? I want to preface this. I talk marketing. I teach marketing. I have a blog called artmarketing.com. I have a series of videos uh, that I've produced. I have a book called Make More Money Selling Your Art, which, by the way, we're giving away for tomorrow. Tomorrow, we're giving away one Make More Money Selling Your Art and one pair of my value specs that help you see values when you're painting. So how do you get more money? Well, the first thing is you need to understand that everything always has to be done ethically, all right? I don't want anybody to do any unethical marketing, any crass marketing, anything that is, uh, you know, overblown. Secondly, um, you don't have to do it. I mean, this is just, these are just ideas, but that, you know, everybody does marketing. Some people do it subtly, some people do it more overtly. Uh, you can decide what works for you, but uh, I talked to an artist just a couple of days ago who said, I realized, oh, this was somebody I interviewed on a podcast, I believe, uh, said, I realized that the one thing that made the difference in my career was when I started marketing and spending time on marketing. And, and it really will make a difference in your career. So imagine this. Imagine for a moment that you're not an artist. Imagine that you are a restaurant owner. And imagine that in your restaurant, in, a, in an average year, I'm just making up numbers. In an average year, you have 10,000 customers who come into your restaurant. 10,000 in a year. So everybody comes in and they buy their meal. But what if when they came in, you trained the waiters and waitresses to ask a question, and that question got most people to buy something extra? A simple question. And let's say that everybody, each of those 10,000 people spent $10 more. That equates to $100,000 new profit to the bottom line. $100,000 by doing what's called an upsell. 
Now, there's lots of different upsells in our lives. We see them all the time. So you go into any restaurant, and restaurants train waiters and waitresses, and they ask them to ask certain questions. What's the first thing that when you sit down in a restaurant, somebody comes up to you other than the water, what's the first thing? Let's get some comments here. What's the first thing that they say? Uh, been there, it does work in the restaurant business. Yes, okay, good. You, you probably should be teaching this. Um, the first thing that they'll say is, uh, if it's an evening time or something, they'll say, uh, would, you like, uh, would you like red or white wine? Uh, so oftentimes they'll say it as an assumption. Instead of saying, do you want alcohol? They'll say, would you like red or white or would you like a beer? Or, uh, or would you like red, white, a beer or a cocktail? Now they're giving you three or four choices, and you, you know, you'll say, well, I, I'd like some white wine. Well, uh, would you like a bottle of white wine, uh, would, or would you like to buy it by the glass? Now, quite frankly, they want you to buy it by the glass because they make more money buying by the glass than, than buying by the bottle, but either way, they're making money on it. So if they can get every table to buy a bottle of wine, you know, they might, or, or a couple glasses of wine, they might make an extra 10, 20, 30, depending on the place. I mean, some restaurants, you could drop a lot of money on cocktails. So um, waiters are trained, or should be trained anyway, to upsell people. So they'll say, what else will they say? Would you like an appetizer? And oftentimes they'll, they'll make your mouth water by saying, you know, we have this brand new fabulous appetizer you know it's it's um, it's buffalo wing sauce with cauliflower and it's it's deep fried and it's about the tastiest thing you know they get you thinking about that stuff your mouth starts watering so it, it, and uh, the really really fancy restaurants will bring a dessert tray because if you just say do you want dessert you know everybody like me they're like no nah, I don't want dessert but when they put that in front of you and you look at it and you see the beauty of the icing and the and the the stuff oozing out of the pie it's like yeah I gotta have one of those and so those things uh, are getting you to spend more money now there are little tiny things that you would think don't don't add up but they do add up what's the difference between uh, the cost of a hamburger and a cheeseburger um, it depends on where you're buying it, but you could spend an extra dollar on a cheeseburger. So if I can get you to spend an extra dollar and everybody who buys a, a, ham, a cheeseburger in the course of a year, you know, I might make 20 or 30 or 40 thousand dollars extra on that just on that cheese, right? So you need to be thinking about that. Now, what happens when you go into McDonald's? You pull up at the drive-thru and what do they say? Do you want fries with that? Uh, would you like a soft drink? You know, would you like some chicken McNuggets? They're asking you questions. Uh, you, you could go into some place and they'll say, would you like some whipped cream on that? And they're not saying whipped cream is, you know, 20 cents extra or 50 cents extra. They're just saying, would you like whipped cream on that? And then that stuff adds up. Now, when you go to a car dealer, uh, what does a car dealer do? You know, uh, that you know you buy your car and then they say would you like leather seats we have one with leather seats you know leather seats you know they feel much better they're more elegant they look good when people are in your car and so you know you buy the leather seats or oftentimes they'll sell you what they call undercoating which is probably there anyway I don't know I'm not I've, I've always heard that but the idea would you like undercoating and so they'll maybe they just go in and they spray something on there and it costs them you know five dollars to do it or ten dollars to do it but they're charging you 150 dollars for it uh, so they're looking for ways that they can upsell you so the question is if you were to sell I'm just gonna make up numbers uh, this is not necessarily you it's not necessarily realistic but I'm using easy numbers let's sell that let's say that you sell your paintings for one thousand dollars and if you were to sell 100 paintings in a year for $1,000, then, and, and you get to keep the money, you're, you're making $100,000 a year. And that's good money. But what if you were to get 20% uh, more money by doing what we call an upsell? So let's say that uh, if you got it, if you're selling for $1,000, 
and you got every person that bought from you to spend an extra $200, how would that change your life? Well, that extra $200,000 would take you immediately, it'd give you a $20,000 raise. It'd take you immediately from $100,000 to $120,000. Because all you're doing is you're asking somebody a question. So the, the thing you've got to ask yourself is what could I do ethically uh, that would be upselling people when I sell a product, whether you're in a gallery, whether you're selling online, whether you're selling for in person, what could I do to upsell people? Well, let me, let me give you some ideas. And, and I would like you guys to put your ideas in the comments. But you know, one of the things that, that nobody does, but is a really great idea, I think, and that is you put it, you know, you have, a, you have your thing in a nice frame uh, and you could say something like, uh, would you like to upgrade to a premium frame? Now, by just by saying that, you're saying that frame that you're in is a nice frame, but it's a cheap Mexican frame or it's a, it's a cheap, you know, some, some, from somewhere else. I, by the way, there's some really beautiful, cheap Mexican frames, so I'm not being derogatory towards them. I use them a lot. But if, if I'm, you know, I know dealers who will put a $2,500, $3,000, even $5,000 frame on something. And I have been to dealers that sell antique paintings that have uh, literally can, can offer you a million dollar frame. There's money to be made on that. So what if you were to say, uh, would you like to explore a premium frame? Let me pull a couple out and see how they look. You pull them out and they go, oh yeah, that's so much better. Because, you know, if you're in, uh, in a nice house, uh, you, you don't want your friends seeing your stuff in substandard frames. So, uh, and, and a great frame makes a great painting look even better. So you can upsell to a premium paint, uh, frame. You can sell a companion painting. You can say, now don't ever lie to anybody, this has to be true, but you could say, you know, uh, I, when I painted this, I imagined it hanging next to this painting. Let me show you that painting. This is once they've already bought. And so, you know, that I'd love for them to go together. And then maybe, maybe they'll pay full price, maybe you have to negotiate, but if you're getting a second sale, it's found money that you otherwise wouldn't be getting. And the next thing you can do is you can sell a commission. You can say, uh, you know, you're there talking to somebody and, you know, you're striking up a conversation. They say, hey, you know, by the way, I, you know, my favorite place in the world to travel is... Um, you know, Switzerland, and I would, I'd love the Matterhorn. And you could say, I, yeah, I'd love to do a painting of the Matterhorn for you. Wouldn't it be nice to have a Matterhorn painting, you know, that lake in front of it and the Matterhorn, the sun shining through and would, would hang it in your living room or your office or, you know, I can make one, you know, for over the fireplace or, you know, I can make it bigger, you know, whatever you want. Uh, at least you're putting the bug in their ear, even if they don't buy it now, you're putting the bug in their ear. Another one is house portraits. Uh, now, you may not do house portraits, but you could, you could offer house portraits. You know, uh, by the way, uh, you guys, I noticed you guys live over on Cardinal Lane and have some pretty houses over there. Uh, it'd be nice to have a house portrait. And you know, one of the reasons it's nice is because uh, oftentimes we don't stay in our homes our whole lives and that way we can take our memories with us. I know that I paint every time we, we move into a new house, I paint. Uh, pictures of that house and that way I have them as memories from uh, our life together, you know, as a family. And so you might be able to talk about house portraits. Um, another thing is prints, you know, prints are, you know, some people think prints are a bad idea, some don't, but one thing you can do is you can sell them a print of the painting that they've got. Now you could say, for instance, I, I did this one time, I had a painting uh, that, uh, that was, uh, I actually, I had a visitor, uh, a pretty well-known artist visitor, and we stood out on the dock, and he painted a picture of the house over there. And uh, the neighbors came over, and they saw it, and they fell in love with it. And so they, uh, they asked how much it was, and they didn't want to buy the original, but they asked if, if, they, if they could buy prints. And so uh, I don't know how the whole thing came down, but essentially they got prints. They, got, they, they gave a print to every one of their kids and grandkids for Christmas because it was their place where all their memories are made. So you could say, you know, do you have a, 
do you have a, would you like to get a, a you know, a, a print of this painting to give to all your family members? Would you like to get a print of, you know, get, get your house, uh, get a stu painting your house, get a print for all your family members? And, you know, my, uh, my mom passed away about a year ago, and we just um, uh, are, are seeing, you know, having, having to see her stuff moved out of her house, and, and uh, it, it is, uh, it's so sad, you know, because we have so many Christmases and so many memories, and, and, but, you know, we have to move on. And so uh, it would be nice, I never have done a painting of that house, but it'd be nice to have a painting of that house and then to give a copy of that painting to my, to my brothers and my nieces and nephews so that they can remember it. Because, you know, those, those memories come, come forward. So look for opportunities of things that you could potentially uh, offer to somebody. And I haven't thought of all the things. So, you know, you could even say, look, I, you know, by the way, I have a, 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 a box of uh, note cards of my paintings, you know, adds, adds another 20 bucks, you know, any, any extra is going to help. Because if you can kind of target the idea of every time I sell something, I can try to ask uh, to get another sale. Now, you will probably be a little uncomfortable with that, but you have to understand it's happening every day in your life when you go into a restaurant, when you go, uh, you buy a lot of things. It happens, it's pretty normal. And so don't necessarily look at it as a bad thing, it's something that could potentially increase your income. If you could increase your income to, for 20% more a year, it'd be worth it. And if you follow my 10, 10, 10 rule, that extra 20% is gonna make a huge difference down the road if, as you increase year after year. So anyway, that's the idea, how to get more money out of every sale. And I hope this has been helpful to you. Uh, remember, tomorrow we're giving away uh, from your comments today. And if you're from outside of the U.S., make sure you make a comment where you're telling us where you live. Uh, we're giving away my book, uh, Make More Money Selling Your Art, uh, number one Amazon bestseller. Yay! And then we're giving away a pair of value specs, which uh, are kind of cool. You know, I sent out an email last night. At about my, my uh, t-shirt, my fashion statement t-shirt, and uh, that'd be pretty cool to wear that with these. I'm just saying. All right, so uh, anyway, that's what we got for today. I'm going to come up to the comments. Remember to go to, to uh, plenairlive.com. Get signed up for that. It's going to be spectacular. You've got to, got to do that. Make sure that you go to streamlinegiveaway.com and sign up for the chance to win plenair convention or figurative art convention seats. And uh, make sure that you put ideas in the comments of things you want me to talk about, address. I, had, I posted a picture last night of a boat at the dock, and I had several people who said, can I do a painting of it? Go for it. Just go for it. All right. And uh, have a terrific day. I'm going to come up to the comments and say hi to you guys. Hello from Colorado. Hello from Montana. Uh, hello, Elaine Miller and uh, Brenda, plenairlive.com. Thanks for doing that, Brenda. Hey, you guys, Instagram guys, let's see. As always, great information. Well, I hope so. Uh, you look darn buff in that T-shirt. Yes. Yeah, the magic of Photoshop. Uh, that's a great presentation. Lots to think about. You know, okay. Let, let me just say something else. Uh, somebody taught me something when I was a little bitty uh, business guy just starting up. They said, uh, every time you have a dialogue with someone, now this was, I was in a sales position. They said, every time you, you leave there, you want to leave there with something. Even if you don't make a sale, you want to leave there with something. And I said, well, what does that mean? They said, well, you want to leave with a commitment, like a commitment that, uh, I can call you back in on tomorrow at noon, or you want to leave with a commitment that they will look at something and that you'll follow up with them, or you want to leave with something. The same is really true in marketing, and that is that everything that you offer, you have to ask yourself, is there a way that I can offer it to perhaps increase my income? Because you're trying to make your, your income bigger. I mean, that's the goal here. Now you won't want people to buy your paintings, but if you could get an extra twenty thousand dollars a year, that'd be that'd be huge, and that's just by 
something little. So, you know, it's kind of just always think, do you want fries with that? And ask yourself, what could I offer? And if you're not offering anything, the other thing you could say is, what else could I potentially get out of this? So uh, a referral is a great one. So, you know, you're dealing with someone who bought a painting and you've just wrapped up the deal and maybe you offered an upsell and they didn't buy it. One thing you could do is you could say, uh, by the way, is there anyone that you know that you think might fall in love with my artwork that you'd be willing to make an intro introduction to? And please know that one thing that happens is um, if you approach somebody and you don't know them, you have about a 5% chance of selling them anything. If you are introduced by somebody, uh, if, you, if you say in an email, you know, Eric Rhodes suggests that I call you, it increases your chances to about 20%. If you can get Eric Rhodes or that person to telephone them and make the introduction, it increases your chances to 80%. So think about the power that other people have to collaborate with you. And, and you, could even, you could even go so far as say, listen, I, you know, uh, it's COVID time, you know, times have been tough, I haven't been selling a lot. I really, really appreciate what you've done for me. And, and would you be willing to help me stay in business? Would you help me sell some paintings? Now, I don't want to go out of your way, but if you know somebody who might want something, or you know somebody has an office they're decorating, or you know somebody that, that might fall in love with my work, would you be willing to make an introduction? And by the way, I'd be happy if, you know, if I sell something, I'd be happy to give you an upgrade on your frame, or I'd be happy, you know, something, give you the note cards, do something for them because they've done something for you. People want to help people. Generally, people want to help people. And, and so, uh, it, you know, I've been very honest and, and direct on this. I've not tried to hide the fact that, you know, this is a tough time for my business. I'm not a big corporation. Uh, you know, we, we kind of uh, eat, eat what we hunt. And uh, I had to lay off a bunch of people uh, when the you know, first week. Uh, which was awful. We love these people. We hope we can get them back. And so we're trying to figure out how to get through this too. And so it's, it's okay, you know, you're human. And we all, in, in the world today, we're all going through this. You know, it's not unusual for somebody to say to me, Eric, you know, my business is crashing and can you help me with some ideas? And I'm, I'm happy to help. And, you know, it's not unusual for me to say, hey, you know, uh, if you, if you see a video you like or you, you want to go for plein air live or something like that, you know, we would appreciate it, you know, because it's tough for us right now. And every one of us is in the same boat. Not a person I know isn't in that boat. Uh, I'm sure there's some that aren't, but most of us are having some impact from this. And so it's, it's just nothing wrong with being able to be honest with people and just say, hey, I could use a little help. A little help never hurts. You know, some people have a little extra and they're generous people and they're like, hey, I have a little extra, I'd love to help. And then some of us are in positions where, you know, we just can't, we don't have anything extra. You know, my neighbor uh, offered me a, a, a pretty little boat for sale this morning that, that uh, I would love to have for, for doing my painting. But, you know, it was pretty expensive and I just said, no, can't do it. Uh, not, you know, not in these times and, you know, maybe someday, but maybe, you know, a year, two years, three years from now, but not, not now. And so we just, we're, we're all in the same boat. Let's all take care of each other. If you were watching this and you're not an artist, you need paintings in your home, in your office and click on any of these artists who are making comments and see if you can buy some art from them. That would be helpful. And, and, and I'm sure, you know, everybody's a little flexible these days because Everybody could stand to sell an extra painting or two. Uh, we're all trying to survive this. And I'm trying to be here for you guys every day at noon to help you survive it. I, I know it's not much, but I'm doing what I can. And uh, I just love doing it for you. And I'll continue to be here. I don't know, it looks like, looks like uh, some areas may be going back into quarantine. So uh, I don't know how long we're gonna be here. Starting July 1st, we're gonna start offering you some classics some of the classics that have been produced a long time ago but are still very, very valuable. You know, once an artist spends their life learning lessons, whether they learned them, uh, you know, 
30 years ago or they learned them today, you know, there's still valuable lessons. The only difference is the technology to, to document them is, is good. Uh, you know, it's better now than it was then, but at the time it was state of the art. So we're going to offer you some of that, some new video segments, and uh, we're repeating some of them right now because a lot of people haven't seen them. Remember, 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock. Tonight, Bill Davidson, at, or today at 3, Bill Davidson with Glowing Landscapes, and tonight at 9, the great artist, watercolorist Kiko Tanabe. I'm Eric Rhodes from Fine Art Connoisseur, Plein Air Magazine, uh, Plein Air Live, Plein Air Convention, Figurative Art Convention and Expo. You know, the list is getting lar larger. You know, we have to keep coming up with new stuff to try to survive all this. And uh, it's crazy. I, I don't think I've ever worked harder in my life. It's just a, an insane time. But you know what? You got to keep your head in the right place. I say it every day. It sure helps. I mean, it's real easy to get uncomfortable and to worry and get depressed. And you are responsible for your own mindset. I last night when I heard about my brother-in-law, I was like, oh, so awful. I talked to him and and it just was so heartbreaking. And I really was, I was really got myself down for a few minutes. And then I thought, no, no, I can't let myself go there because, I, you know, you, you can go into a spiral. So I pulled myself out of it, you know, and my temptation was to have a glass of wine or something. I thought, no, nope, no, nope, not going there. So anyway, keep your head in the right place. Stay positive. Dance. I know that's pretty scary, isn't it? Uh, have fun and go do something fun. Take a walk, get some exercise, uh, cook something that you really love, uh, you know, do something fun for your family. Do, do good, cool things because this is a special time. We will look back on this time and look at it as actually a time that we cherish. I already am cherishing the time with my kids and my wife. We're going to look back in this and say, you know, there was a lot of good that came out of that. Make sure you check out last week's Sunday Coffee. It's coffeewitheric.com. Check that out because I talk a lot about the good things that we can find out of this. Have a great day. See you guys. Bye. I'll turn it around to the lake. Okay? Here we go. Get ready. Buckle your seatbelts. All right. No boats out there right now. I can hear boats. Take a deep breath. Take it in. Just imagine yourself sitting here on the porch. People who come to the Adirondack Publishers Invitational will get to come here and hang out with us and sit on the porch and play music with Rick Wilson. Got to be a lot of fun. So. Take a deep breath before we go. Blow it out. Keep your mind clear. Take five minutes every day and just go sit and close your eyes and just sit for five minutes without anything. Could be meditation, could be prayer, but if you just give yourself five minutes of quiet time, nobody does it. And it's so remarkable. It will help you so much. Take a deep breath. We'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye.